Hi guys, this is JasonO.com and I'm here with the unboxing of a gaming phone. It's been a while since we last tested a device of the sort. It's the Asus ROG Phone 5S. It was launched uh, in August and it comes after the model from the spring, the Asus ROG Phone 5. It's basically a similar phone except for the touch sampling rate and the CPU, this time a Snapdragon 888 Plus processor inside. So uh, it's uh, rather different than usual packaging, uh, as I would say typical for a gaming phone, which always tries to give you something extra. Now the design hasn't changed a lot from the predecessor, uh, but we do have some things to mention here. This part lights up, it can also be tweaked from the settings and you also have a special interface applied on top of Android 11. Now the price tag should be around 1099 euros in Europe on Amazon and the device is supposed to be a powerhouse especially since we have the 16 gig of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage version here. Okay so it has fired up, it has a pretty beautiful 3D wallpaper here, an animated one. That's what the interface looks like and of course you can trigger that special area uh, with all of those cool settings. The games library, the console and so much more but we'll get into that later. Let's see what's inside the box. This part here, when caught on camera, becomes animated. It's AR content here and inside the box we have the following. So we start with this key here, which is unusually shaped, like a sword in a video game. The key is, is used to access the nano SIM card slot, we don't have microSD here. One welcome bonus, which I haven't seen other uh, phone gaming phone making companies offer us, is the fact that you're getting a Stadia uh, subscription. We also have the Asus warranty form, we have those stickers. This is the Stadia Pro Pass for three months and also we have the manual here, the user guide, which is quite hefty compared to other manuals out there and a case, a bumper case for the handset, which lets the light still be visible even when applied. Now in the box, we also have the following, a hefty charger with a USB-C connector. It's a 65 watt charger, possibly one of the biggest I've seen from Asus in the ROG phone lineup. Here we have the cable, it's still braided from USB-C to USB-C and a bunch of plugs which are used to cover the secondary USB port which is on the side in order to let you continue gaming while charging the phone which is a problem which people have complained about a few generations before. Okay, so when I'm talking about that I mean this port here so if you remove the lid like I'm doing right now you'll uncover these extra metallic pins and this extra USB port, which completes this one here. Okay, now, as far as the device is concerned, we have a lot to talk about. First things first, you're going to notice these cycling colors of the ASUS RGB logo on the backside. This is the regular 5S version. The Pro version has an extra screen, a PMOLED screen at the backside, which is also pretty cool. Okay, so design, it's similar to the ROG Phone 5. Uh, you can actually confuse them if you don't look closer. We have a similar camera area here. It's a triple back camera. Of course, the back is made of glass. We have an aluminum frame and once again, glass at the front protected by Gorilla Glass Victus. It's obviously a hefty phone, 9.9 millimeters in thickness, but slimmer compared to the ROG Phone 5, which uh, was about 10 millimeters and change. It weighs 238 grams, which is heavy, but it also offers a reassuring feeling when being held like this during gaming. Gorilla Glass Victus at the front, Gorilla Glass 3 at the back, an aluminum frame, the RGB panel that lights up here, and uh, you can customize that RGB panel from the console area. If you go here, you can go to the system lighting and you can edit it in colors, brightness and color cycling, all of them can be set from here. Okay, now aside from that, I think it's time to talk about the display, which is one of the most important aspects of a gaming phone. This is an AMOLED panel, a quite large one, 6.78 inches, with a resolution of 2448 over 1080 pixels. It has a 144 Hz refresh rate, and you can uh, set it up from the settings. Uh, okay, so a lot of settings, by the way, for this screen panel. 
animation speed nope not this one here refresh rate can be managed by the system mode x mode which is pretty interesting you're being sent here for the management of the um, well refresh rate among other things this is the advanced section and you can also do some editing here we got the performance and this is it set refresh rate 120 hertz you can uh, mess around with the sliding sensitivity sliding precision touch sensitivity and more and if you change the modes for example let's try advanced you can do more editing here thermal limit cpu performance gpu network and here's finally what we're looking for you can set the refresh rate to 60 hertz for system color to dark and change a few other things around here i find it pretty odd that there's not a clear way of actually getting into those modes i mean really changing the refresh rate as i want to um, or am i missing something here anyway i would have liked a more intuitive fashion to change the refresh rate the good news is that you can do that during a video game I found it uh, with that special side menu, you can go to up to 144 Hz. Aside from that, there's HDR10 Plus support and uh, uh, we also, I think it's time to address what's inside the phone. This one is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 Plus processor, 5 nanometer. It's accompanied by 8, 12 or 16 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. We're lucky enough to have the version with 16. There's also a huge 530 gigabytes of storage here. There are version with 128 or 256 UFS 3.1, no micro SD. When it comes to the acoustics, we have uh, the audio jack here at the bottom, and we also have stereo speakers with amplifiers. So there's a slit here and another slit here. A huge potency of the speakers, believe me. Another big plus of this gaming phone is the large 6000 mAh battery with its 65 watt charging, promises to reach 70% in 30 minutes. And we also have 10 watt reverse charging, so you can use the phone as sort of a power bank. And you can also do the charging from here, so it doesn't impede your gaming, because plugging it in here would bother you when holding the phone like this. The colors in which the device is available in are Phantom Black and uh, Storm White or something like that, so this is obviously the Phantom Black. When it comes to co connectivity, we're pretty well covered. Uh, we're already connected to a Wi-Fi 6 network. We also have Wi-Fi 6E support, 5G, dual band GPS, NFC, USB-C 3.1 on the side here and USB-C 2.0 at the bottom. And uh, for security, we have an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is pretty fast and snappy, but I also have set up the face unlock via the 24 megapixel selfie camera here which has full hd video capture this camera is more important than expected because it's also useful for streaming during gaming so 24 megapixels at the front and if you go to the back side this is a triple back camera it hasn't changed very much over the past year 64 megapixel main shooter uh, 13 megapixel ultra wide shooter and 5 megapixel macro camera it shoots, it shoots 8k video has an led flash and uh, the camera interface looks like this pretty typical for an asus phone we got the main modes here motion tracking pro video pro photo macro night there's also document scanning for students i guess and the uh, corporate people portrait photo video and once again you can switch resolution up to 8k time lapse slow-mo and that's about it for gaming, we have the buttons here. There's one button here and another one here. From what I can see, there's also this area here which you can hold to activate certain features of the device. And I think we've pretty much covered everything. Software-wise, this is Android 11 with the ROG UI on top and its core modification is this console area here. You can see the CPU temperature, GPU temperature, system temperature, and um, you can mess around with the settings here. Just a few of them. We have background music. We have the main profiles, X mode, dynamic, ultra durable and advanced. Each of them can be edited. And each of them has a different profile. Changes the refresh rate and the CPU usage. The system lighting you already saw. There's a fan speed if you attach a fan. There's the Game Genie area which lets you manage the games and do some video streaming. The air triggers are basically what I mentioned before. The side buttons which let you uh, have features associated when doing gaming. We have an AR mission, 
uh, using the parts of the box and it's actually see that if you're really curious about it so it should be able to activate scan each comic grid in order to start the experience you can hear music and see the animation in motion and that all happens to augmented reality which is a big thing nowadays has been big for about 10 or 12 years and that's the final one and then you can actually start playing a game it's actually more of a test of the trigger buttons from the top side So I have to power up his special spinal armor by pressing the trigger buttons and that's about it. And my reward for playing this initial game is the fact that I can set myself an augmented reality uh, virtual mask to use as my own avatar in the community. I'm talking about the ASUS ROG community, it should detect my face and these are some of the masks which I can associate some of them can be unlocked through progressing with various games and features. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There are more things to discover within this area here. There's a connect area, which is for socializing and news. There's a featured area. And this is my profile. And I promised to show you a special mode before. Now, if you want to get into games like PUBG New State, once you enter the game, you can easily and finally be able to tweak the modes I mentioned before, the refresh rate. For example, I would set it up to 144 Hz for here. I can go to auto, 60, 120, 144, whatever I need. I can do many things from here, air triggers, quick control, crosshair, which is kind of an unfair advantage. And I'm going to go to the training grind right now to show you a bit more about those uh, trigger buttons. I've associated one to the targeting and one to the shooting, but you can do whatever you want. Maybe associate one to the backpack and uh, maybe associate one, I don't know, to the crouching. It's strictly your choice. Okay, so I've been playing PUBG New State for a bit. You can probably tell from the things I've unlocked so far. The biggest disappointment is the team that match, not very evolved. Okay, so let's get some weapons from here and start shooting. Maybe this one. Now, instead of pressing the screen to fire, I'm going to use this button here. And this one is for targeting. So it's much easier to press them. And you can change their association from here. You can go to the air triggers and do whatever you want from here. There's also motion control and cooler buttons if you have a cooler attached. That's pretty much it. This has been the first contact with the ASUS ROG Phone 5S and uh, it's quite a lot to unpack here. We're definitely getting a phone uh, which is fully featured gaming wise. I'm loving the fact that even though if you play for a long period it doesn't get overheated. I'm loving those uh, AR packaging and there's a lot of power here for sure. We'll be back with a full review pretty soon. That's it from us. I'm particularly impressed by the screen and I look forward to testing especially the battery. Bye-bye.